the X-ray emission spectrum graph can change it based on different te uh, uh, technique selection or based on how the tube is made. Changes in MA, KB, filtrations, uh, atomic number of the target disk will affect the optical density of the radiograph as well as the contrast of the radiograph. These changes affect X-ray emission spectrum as well, the graph, how the graph looks. And we discuss, we're gonna discuss each of the part and how the graph shape based on the changing of MA, KV, filtration, and top number. Normally, as a technologist, we can manipulate MA, KV, and number of filtrations, or filters, but we can't manipulate atomic number. Isn't, uh, isn't it always going to be 74 since it's tungsten? Or? Yeah, it's always 74, but uh, uh, we could use in theory to use other material as oh, well. Okay. Uh, but the uh, industry standard is always going to be the tungsten just because it's available and you know, just cheap to use economically. therefore affect the amount of x-rays produced. So changes in MA will affect the amplitude, mainly just the amplitude, that's the height of the graph. Uh, it doesn't pretty much change the, the energy level. It's going to stay in the same area. So when we increase from 200 MA to 400 MA, the amplitude will pretty much just double, increase in size. But the energy level will remain the same. To cause a change in the amplitude, but there's no movement in terms of X, uh, shift or compass shift of the X-ray energy graph. So the X-ray energy is always constant? No, it's constant based on... Kilo. Based on MA right now. So we can just discuss MA. A change in MA will mainly cause a change in the amplitude of the spectrum. There's no changes on the, the graph uh, energy level. Again, going the opposite, if you reduce 400 to 200, then the MP will reduce by half. So MA may control the quantity <coughs> of the number of x-rays. Any questions? Other factor affect the spectrum would be the KV. KV affect both amplitude as well as the position of the graph. For example, let's say if you increase in KV, the amplitude will increase, and so will the graph. So the graph will shift <coughs> further to the right. High KV will cause the amplitude to increase, and also cause the graph to shift further to the right, because of high energy. And if you go backward, if KV is decreased from 800 to 80, amplitude will decrease and shift back to the left. So KV affect both quantity and quality, number of X-ray and the strength of X-ray, whereas MA just affect number of X-rays or the quantity of X-rays. Make sense? I don't know. It's a little different because in another class we never mentioned nothing about KV affecting quantity. In one point six. Yeah. Well, we talked a lot about. I mean, it's, it, it, it's always been quantity has been a factor of MA only. Yeah, but in terms of KV, it affects both quantity and quality. Yeah. That's why we have the fifteen percent rule. When when changing the density of it, you're talking about for yeah, KV. So so oh, okay. <coughs> and then with filtration. Filtration, the purpose of filtration as a name, by filter, filter out all the low level energy of x-ray that's coming out from tube uh, that is pretty much not useful in diagnostic x-ray. Otherwise, we will just absorb into the patient. So filter, <coughs> filter out the low level energy, and when you filter out the low energy, on the average, it increases in strength. So filtration affects both the amplitude as well as the position 
of the graph. Filter, um, by increasing filter from uh, two millimeter to four millimeter, you absorbing all the low level energy, so the filtration decreases the amplitude but cause a more movement to the right. That's um, kind of more movement. So filter affect both the amplitude and the position of the spectrum. An increase in the filter decreases the amplitude? Yeah, because when you increase the filter, it absorbs more of the low level energy. So there's less quantity, so mm -hmm. it decreases. And then but on the average, the energy increases, so it's kind of moved a little to the right. Mm -hmm. So filter affect both amplitude and position of the spectrum. Are you going to ask us regarding the graph, like what kind of change in the graph? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I would probably don't know if there's a graph in it, but I would ask questions. So you're going, what caused the change? And then we're talking to which we don't really um, care much because we can manipulate that. Where we get from extra tube, going to be extra tube. But different material can produce different um, amount of number of quantity and extra energy. Tungsten is a standard industry, but if you use, let's say, gold, gold is a much better uh, element in producing of X-ray, but the atomic number is 79, so you have to increase the energy level, uh, 79 at the K level, to produce a uh, K characteristic. So the change in the target material will also affect both the quantity and quality, but we don't change the target material. So having different target material will affect both number and extra energy. So in summary, this is what it is. Two current, which is milliampers, may affect the amplitude of the spectrum, how high or how low the spectrum is. Change in voltage, KV, affect both amplitude and the position of the graph. <coughs> Adding filter, change in filter, will also affect amplitude and position. Filter mainly applies affect a lot of the low level energy. So you see a more of a bending on the left side. And then different target material will affect both the amplitude of the spectrum as well as the position of the spectrum. So that's pretty much a summary of what we just discussed. will be on the quiz. What we're going to discuss right now, from the start from the slide, won't be on the quiz. <coughs> but we'll do the test. So the X-ray exposure is based on the number of photons coming out from the tube. And we can measure this and cause them and call it intensity as well. And we measure this intensity in some uh, uh, unit rankings. Do you remember ranking? Mm -hmm. Or real ranking? Commonly, that's how we measure. Or gray, air chroma of coulomb per kilogram. Uh, the different names that we use are called exposure, radi radiation quantity, radiation intensity, and there's different factors that affect radiation intensity. Some of these factors affect the quantity of x-ray intensity, would be mass, milliampere seconds, which is considered as a primary factor affecting it, and then we have what we call secondary factors. Which, is, which affect quantity as well. So we have KV, distance, and filtrations, which consider to be secondary factors. Uh, although KV have a lot of influence in terms of quantity, but it's considered secondary. Thank 
Is that? Mm-hmm. All right, Miller M for a second, mass. Uh, Miller M has to determine how many electrons will travel, uh, will be available, and how long the electron will flow, because it's a second, right? So it's duration. So it's based on amount, <coughs> quantity. In terms of uh, radiograph, Miller M per second mass mainly controls the radiographic density of the X ray image. That's the overall dark, uh, darkness of the film. How dark the film is and how light the film is. If it's too dark, then there's too much mass. If it's too light, then there's not enough mass. There's not enough going through. <coughs> and it's proportional. You double the mass, you double the exposure, and you double the density of the radiograph. So, and so increasing mass will increase the quantity, <coughs> thereby increasing density as well as increasing patient exposure. It's a proportional relationship. And there's an equation that we use to determine how much of intensity level based on the change of mass. And the formula we use for mass and intensity would be I1 over I2 equal to <coughs> mass 1 over mass 2. In original intensity over new intensity equal original mass over new mass. So it's a proportional relationship. I don't think I should do this in my first six <coughs> Don't use that one. We use other formulas like that, but not that one. So it was all intensity over new? <coughs> original intensity over, intensity over new intensity. Equal original mass, old mass, whatever you guys want to call it, over new mass. Okay, let's do an example. Consider the exposure rate using 110 kV with 10 mass result in an intensity of 32 meter kV per hour. So that's the intensity. Why is the new intensity if mass is increased to 20 MAS? From the discussions, I mentioned that it's proportional, right? If you double the mass, you double what? <laughs> Exposure and mm-hmm. you double density. Based on this question, <coughs> what to mass? Doubled. It's double. So then you would expect intensity will be double. Double. So it'd be 64 without even using the formula. So, but let's do check. <coughs> um, our original intensity was given as 32. <coughs> uh, with a mass of 10. <coughs> New intensity is unknown <coughs> when uh, mass is increased from 10 to 20. We use this, one over two correct. Cross multiply, x, two times 32 is 64. 64 what? Millie Rankins. <coughs> Going on. Um, what is your exposure rate by the minimum? So how we get that? What is the exposure rate by the minute? So how do we get 64 divided by 60? Second standard, what is your exposure rate? And so you got six one point zero seven divided by sixty. Sixty. <coughs> so for point zero eight, one seven. Second standard, you get one zero one uh, seven. One divided by two. New rankings per second. Every second standard, you get point zero two exposure. And so for every minute, after a minute, you get point one seven. After sixty minutes, you get sixty four minutes. 
when you guys are going to ask to convert Something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Questions? <coughs> you guys don't want to ask questions, huh? It's going to get out here. <laughs> All right, so that was a primary factor. We're going to talk about secondary factor. One of the first of the secondary factor will be KV, KVP, KVP, kilovolt potential. Uh, KV mainly controls the strength of the X-ray beam, the penetration power of the beam. Um, so it affects the quality of the beam. So that's the primary factor of KV, the quality, the strength of the beam. The secondary <coughs> effect of KV affects the quantity of the beam. So we uh, so it's, it's considered secondary. Um, the way. And an increase in KV will also have an increase in the quantity of uh, X-rays. But, but it has a greater influence uh, in terms of the quantity. Whereas in mass, to double um, the quantity, you have to double the mass. In KV, to, just to double the quantity, um, 15 percent. The density you need to do increase it by 15 percent. Uh, so we call that 15 percent rule. 15 percent rule states that increasing KV by at least just 15 percent will actually cause a double in the radiographic density of the over radiograph film. Um, decrease of KV by 15 percent will then also cut radiographic density by half. So even though the secondary factor it play a very great influence in terms of affecting <coughs> our radiographic density. Increasing KV is the same as doubling the mass. Because you double the mass, you double the density, 15 percent increase. Okay. If you have the 146, this is somewhere we do. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure you discovered it in the technique selection yeah. um, uh, unit. If PERI is increased by 15 percent, if you want to maintain the same radiographic density, then you have to cut the mass by half. If you want it, KV is increased by 15% and you want to maintain the same radiographic density, then you have to increase mass by, by doubling it. Radiograph is taken off shoulder and it's unexposed. So there's more white on the radiograph thing, so it's less density. The following technique will be used 60 kV at 2.5 mass. Um, what is the new kV would be required to double the density to produce a good diagnostic radiograph? To double density, we could change mass, right? from 2.5 to 1. But, but the question doesn't want us to change mass. It wants to change K. 
Jadi Sambil lagi saya kecil pesan dulu uh, We can ok this selection 60 1.5 60 times 0.1 5 Which is 9 yep. So our new technique will be 70. So I'm taking calls for 25 MA at one quarter of a second using 70 KB. We want to reduce motion, right? So in order to reduce motion, we have to cut exponential time in half. So which would be one tenth of a second. Or one fifth, one tenth of a second. Exposure time is decreased, therefore mass will also decrease by half. So density will decrease by 50% as well. What is new KB? needed in order to maintain the same proper radiographic density. <coughs> so our original mass was uh, was what? And then we call what's the mass equation? And A second. So M A is twenty five. Is five mass. <coughs> so with 25 at one fifth of a second, we give you five mass. However, time change from one fifth to one ten, which reduce mass by half. So it'll be five B two twenty-five. Mass is free by half, I mean density decreased by half. To bring up density back to the normal range, we have to change KV. So KV using 50% rule. 70. 10, 5, 60. How much do we change KV by? 10.5. Let's just run off to you do that. So we have to increase KV by 11 units. So from 72 81. 81. 81 KB at 2.5 minutes. in terms of controlling radiographic contrast. Mm -hmm. So using a 50 kV, contrast is too high, so we want to change kV uh, by increasing it. So it tells you to increase kV. What is the new technique we produce with the same radio detail but with lower contrast? When we change kV, we increase kV. <coughs> high kV, we produce, we produce low radiographic contrast. But by changing kV, it also affects radiographic density. So we want to have lower contrast but with the same level of radiographic density. So what should we do? So high KV uh, using the Gibson rule. KV times 0.15 give me 7.5. Round off to eight. So we have to increase KV by eight units, so B D D eight. Right. If contrast when we is too KV, <coughs> we do lower contrast but one to density. And also double. But we want to yeah. If the contrast was too high, we're trying to lower it. Yeah, so in KV it was in the opposite direction. High KV we produce low. 
contrast. So we want to lower the contrast. Lower contrast is going to give you more shape. It's opposite. Scale. Stronger kilovoltage is going to give you a lower contrast Strong scale. Stronger contrast with more penetration, more, more interaction with the film will give you more, more gray scale on the graph. Okay. So that's Just think of it opposite. That. So high KV will give you lower contrast. Since it's not 146, I'm not really discussing that. <laughs> high KV give you lower contrast. Okay, so it tells you. It's just read the question. It tells you what to do. Okay. So high K, <laughs> so you need to increase. So you have to increase. By increasing K, you change in contrast. Yes, you were working with that. But we have to use density. It, it double as well. So you want to do low contrast, but with the same density. You have to cut to six. To same density, what we have to do with Cut mass six and a half. half. You have to cut mass in half. So it would be three. Add Three mass. Three mass. So we accomplish by having lower contrast with the same <laughs> ratio. Any questions? Well, uh, this part's kind of hard. <laughs> Thank you.